Hello everyone again. I hope that you had some refreshments and I hope that the others will arrive soon. In the meantime, I would like to open our next and last session. It's a session with invited lectures. And today I have pleasure to introduce you a colleague from Vincha and CERN to, together, um, Milos Georgievich, who is going to talk about on behalf of the CMS collaboration about open data um, from CMS at CERN so that we can know how much CERN is open and what can we expect. Um, so I'm now going to give him a word. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Mirkovic, for this uh, very nice introduction. Uh, good morning or uh, good afternoon now to everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for this uh, very nice uh, opportunity to participate in this uh, conference and uh, for an invitation to give uh, this talk on the status and plans of the open data from the CMS experiment at CERN. This is the outline of the talk. I will uh, mention just briefly the, the Large Hadron Collider at, uh, uh, at CERN and the CMS experiment, uh, which is one of the four main experiments uh, around the ring. Uh, most of you already know uh, many things around uh, CERN, I'm sure. Then I will uh, t uh, speak a little bit uh, in more detail uh, on how we record the, the collisions uh, and uh, the, the collisions of particles of protons uh, in uh, these four places where uh, the beams intersect and where, where we put the detectors. And, uh, and then uh, uh, I will give motivation to release the, some of the CMS uh, data, uh, some of the data to the public. I will talk uh, in a little bit more detail about the format of the data, on how we access the data, and uh, I will give one or two examples of the usage of the CMS open data. Uh, toward the end of the talk, I will give uh, feedback uh, and also some experience from the, from the users. Uh, as you most likely know, the Large Hadron Collider is operating since uh, 2010 and uh, taking data. It uh, has been restarted uh, this uh, July, uh, and now it is uh, uh, colliding protons at record-breaking energies of 13.6 tera electron volts in the system of center of mass energy. Uh, around this ring, as I said, there are these four major experiments. Uh, in this talk, we will focus on the one that I'm working on. It is called the, uh, the CMS, which is short for a compact muon solenoid. Here on this right side, you can see a 3D model of the detector itself, uh, <clears throat> which is a, a multi-layered and a multi-purpose uh, detector, and the, the, the experiment as well, where the proton collisions happen in the center of this detector, which is surrounded by the tracking system. Then the, the calorimeters follow, the electromagnetic and hadronic calorimeter, and both calorimeters and the tracking system are embedded within this uh, solenoid magnet, producing four Tesla field inside and two Tesla outside. And the outside, there are four muon stations to detect the most penetrable particles, uh, which are called muons. So it's a multi-purpose experiment, mainly designed to conduct uh, uh, searches and the characterization of the Higgs boson but also to, to make uh, precision measurements of the standard model parameters and also to search for the, uh, some of the physics phenomena beyond the standard model. Now, um, this is the, the image where you can see how the, the, the beams are circulating uh, in the Large Hadron Collider and uh, how they collide in the center of the detectors. The beams uh, themselves are not uh, homogeneous. They are, they, are, they are organized in bunches of protons each of these bunches of protons has a large number of uh, particles, uh, let's say billions of particles, and uh, when the experiment works on the maximum design the luminosity, uh, these bunches are spaced uh, uh, 7.5 meters, and consequently because these uh, rotate uh, toward uh, the speed of uh, light, almost uh, the speed of light, uh, they, are, they are time separated by, uh, uh, by each other by 25 nanoseconds. So what uh, happens in these bunch collisions is uh, that uh, much uh, more, uh, on much more rare uh, scale, uh, there are central, most central collisions between the protons themselves from the, from the bunches. So what we are interested, interested in are these collisions where the protons uh, exchange most of their energy in the collisions. That's when the constituent, constituent quarks from the protons interact, and that's when they produce uh, some new particles. Some known particles, some particles that we could expect, such as the Higgs boson. Uh, however, the rate uh, of the production of these particles is very small, maybe one particle per second, and potentially also some other uh, particles. Because uh, we, we cannot take all of this data, that is huge, it would generate uh, maybe 50 terabytes uh, uh, of data per day. That is why we need to apply the selective readout system, 
which is an online system which selects events in the real time, and this is called the trigger system. It is organized, uh, as you can see in this scheme, in two steps. One step is this level one trigger, which is an electronic-based uh, trigger. We have a fast and custom-made electronics, which make uh, a, a real-time selection on, on uh, what uh, will the data acquisition system take. And then we have a second level of the, of the trigger system, which is called the high-level trigger. This is the, the streamlined or the speeded up version of the offline reconstruction uh, uh, code that uh, is executed on the computing farm. Right now, we, uh, we have introduced also in this uh, high-level trigger uh, the heterogeneous uh, uh, um, architecture in running these, uh, these codes and we employ about 25% of GPUs as well on the high-level trigger. What, what we achieve in this way, we reduce the, the total bunch uh, crossing frequency at uh, level 1 uh, to 100 kilohertz, and after running the high-level trigger, we reduced one, about 1.5 kilohertz at the moment. Now, what is the motivation to release some of this uh, data that we collect uh, to the public? Uh, I would say that uh, science should be inclusive and then the knowledge obtained should be open to every, uh, everyone, not just through the scientific papers. Uh, this is uh, also something that could uh, facilitate uh, uh, availability of data could uh, engage people, get involved in research. Uh, what is uh, very important is, is that uh, this data that is released uh, in public is the original data and you can use exactly this data in the, in the teaching uh, process and in the outreach uh, uh, events such as master classes at CERN to attract uh, some more students to this interesting field. It is another way also how to return something directly to the society in a way. Uh, let's say the fundamental uh, research are uh, always uh, always take some time to, 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 be, to be felt, okay, the, the impact to be felt on the, on the, on the community in total. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the one, uh, one of the most uh, obvious, obvious benefits is this scientific research, where we uh, do improve in this way the exchange of knowledge with the non-cooperation members, but either from the same, from the field of particle physics, or from different neighboring fields, such as data science or machine learning. Now, where to start and how to find the CMS uh, open data? There is a portal there you, that you can explore, and there is uh, more than two petabytes of data uh, uh, available uh, uh, to be, uh, to be uh, tested and, and, and examined. Uh, here is how this uh, browsing window looks. Uh, you can search for either the, the particular data sets or uh, some software that you would want to install, some documentation, and you can focus o o also here on the uh, all four uh, LHC experiments plus some additional information. Now, this is uh, some basic information about uh, the data itself. Uh, there is a, a special uh, policy that uh, CMS has uh, issued, I think, in 2018 on the preservation of this data, on the reusage re of this data, and on the open access of this. And then CMS collaboration has, ob has obliged to uh, publish uh, more than 50% of its data that, is, that uh, has been collected after three years and 100% uh, uh, of its data after 10 years. Um, here you can see the, uh, the, the, the total integrated luminosity, which is the amount of the data that we collected each year from 2010 to 2018. And you can see from the start of the data taking in each year's period, somewhere around spring, all the way to, let's say, late November, you can see how three years uh, the intensity was, uh, was rising uh, steadily. And now in 2018, what was the amount of data collected? So now what we, what, uh, one uh, which is, who is interested in, uh, in testing this data uh, can, uh, can examine are the data collected from uh, 2010, 2011, 2012. And you can see the, okay, in some units that we use, I won't be getting it that much into, uh, what is the amount of data available. So this is, these are considerable portions of the data that uh, were collected in these years. Now how to access the CMS uh, open data? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, let's say that uh, there is a specific environment that you need to set up to account of this data, it's called the CMS software, CMSSW, and uh, this is internal to the community itself. However, with uh, the uh, availability of these, uh, these two uh, ways, these two, uh, these two uh, tools, uh, one, can, uh, one can indeed uh, replicate uh, most of, in the case of virtual machines, so there is a light uh, CMSSW uh, environment being set up, uh, or one can use also the Docker container, which uh, uh, is more recent addition to the CMS open data, where you can really uh, add uh, uh, practically the whole analysis uh, that is originally done in the, in, the C in the CMS collaboration. You can totally keep it uh, and uh, preserve it uh, using the Docker container. There are uh, here uh, 
wings, uh, which you can take to south uh, to see how uh, you, can, you, can, you can set up your environment and examine the data. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of the format of the data, what comes from the data acquisition system and from the, from the trigger system, which is the online selection, uh, are the raw events. So these are uh, hits in the, in the detector uh, subsystems, uh, uh, signals from the, from the calorimeter, signals from the, from the pixel detector, from the silicon strip detector in the tracking uh, part, and uh, these require reconstruction so that, uh, that it is converted into something more, uh, uh, let's say, resembling physics objects. And then uh, there is a reduced version of the reconstruction uh, Data tier, which is called the which is called the AOD, the analysis object data. This is what uh, has been released uh, to the public. These are, in principle, serialized C++ objects requiring a specific environment, and also it requires the root uh, software to analyze this, uh, this data. Uh, however, this information information is quite huge. It's about 500 kilobytes of information uh, uh, per event. So these files are, are large. That's why in CMS collaboration and also what is released to the public. There are uh, the, the reduced uh, event contents, such as this mini AOD, which is the reduced version of the AOD. And there is also nano AOD. Nano AOD is pictured here, where you can see which kind of information you have in this nano AOD uh, in relation to the particles called muons. So you have in each event the number of muons that are reconstructed, the transfer momentum, some of the coordinates, the mass of the muon, and also their charge. What is specific for this nano AOD is that uh, it is reduced that much uh, that uh, it can be accessed also uh, without setting up the CMS. W. So it's enough to, to go to the, to the website, the root.cern.ch, install root, it is very straightforward, and you can immediately access these nano AOD files and analyze, uh, analyze this. What uh, the CMS Open Data has provided is also there are tools for converting the AOD to nano AOD to ease the access uh, of uh, this data uh, that is released. Now, this is uh, uh, an open data example, one of the many examples available. This is an example of uh, reconstructing the Higgs uh, boson that is decaying to four leptons. So the Higgs boson is a very rare particle. It, uh, it decays very quickly into one of the cases, in one of the cases into, into two Z bosons. Each of the Z bosons is decaying to two leptons, can be either electrons or muons, for example. And uh, with this uh, signal of uh, four leptons, you see the, here the four lepton invariant mass. So two of uh, them are forming the Z boson peak, and uh, uh, the four of uh, them uh, are uh, forming the signal of the Higgs uh, boson. In principle, this is how the, in the original analysis uh, pictured in this paper, the Higgs boson was discovered in 2012 by CMS and other collaborations, uh, uh, directly scrutinizing and uh, extracting statistically this, uh, this peak from the, from the, from the flat background. So what uh, you can see here is the published uh, paper, published reference, uh, taking the CMS open data and doing the simplified version of the analysis uh, of Higgs to four leptons, but with the CMS open data. In principle, uh, okay, if one, is, uh, one really wants uh, to do this, uh, uh, he can contain the whole, whole information in the, of the analysis in the Docker, uh, Docker container and preserve the full analysis. Uh, now, uh, I will give some, some more introduction about the trigger system uh, in CMS because this is uh, important for the next uh, example I will show. Uh, so what the data acquisition system and the trigger uh, systems are doing, they are, um, they are creating this raw data which contains the, 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 the data from the detector itself and the decisions from the level one trigger and from the high level trigger uh, stages of selection. Uh, this, uh, this HLP part is run on the computing uh, farm and uh, what is uh, uh, characteristic for the HLT selection is that these decisions uh, that occur uh, uh, for each of these uh, units of selection of the HLT uh, objects uh, that are forming the HLT path, these decisions are uh, called modules and they are executed in, in a sequence. So that means that in each event when you run one of these uh, trigger paths, uh, in certain, uh, if certain module uh, doesn't fire or the condition doesn't pass, uh, uh, all the rest of the trigger path is, uh, is then not executed. So it's stopped at the particular module. Uh, in case of level one uh, decision, uh, all the decisions are separate, so they are executed in logical order. So now this is the analysis code uh, for this trigger information uh, uh, taken from this CMS open data uh, uh, from the data in 2011. 
this is an example of C++ and the code uh, which is uh, written to, uh, to perform the example uh, and the Python code which is configured, configuring the, the example itself. Uh, this is where you can find the example uh, for this, uh, in this case. Uh, and uh, this is what the example contains. It contains uh, some very simplified and general information uh, analyzers of how to extract the trigger information uh, from the events themselves, such as, for example, this metadata, some free scales, uh, some model information. And what we will focus here is this uh, second one, which is called module and trigger analyzer. So this uh, analyzer gives us information of uh, uh, what are all the modules of particular trigger path uh, uh, that, is, that, is, uh, that is executed, and which is the last active trigger module that was, uh, that was running uh, uh, in particular event. So which, at which stage, for example, uh, these modules are executed and when, where uh, the, the, the sequence, of, sequence was potentially broken. Uh, this is just a, a part of the code uh, to see how uh, one operates with, uh, within this environment. So in principle, once you use the virtual machine or the Docker uh, container, uh, you use this command to set up the environment, you navigate through the, the directories, you, you take the example from the GitHub, you compile everything, you, you link some uh, execution configuration name. Then you link yourself from to the external database of the files to give you conditions on, the, on, the, on, on which the, the events were uh, executed and taken. And then you run the, the example. Once you run the example, then you are checking uh, what is the output. And in this page, uh, there is the output. So on the left-hand side, you can see for one particular trigger, this is a trigger that selects a jet, which is a spray of particles such as quarks and gluons or some other particles as well, which is uh, happening in these uh, proton-proton collisions. And you can see that there are about 24, 25 modules uh, in sequence of execution of this uh, trigger path. So we start with some digitalization, conversion from RAW to PG, then we build these uh, jet events, we do the unpacking in the subdetector systems, and toward the, the end we build, we run the jet algorithm, and we make, make the jets themselves. This is the output of this uh, analyzer, and you can see the process, processing of events. So you take, you go, to, for example, to the first event, and you can see in this event, this one plotted in red, uh, which is, sorry, the number, number nine out of 23, 24 of this path, has, has, uh, was the last uh, module that was running. It was the last uh, module that was running, and it, the procedure didn't go, didn't go through f uh, further. Then in the next event, 42, you see the, the, the green one, this corresponds to this module that was running in the sequence, and and so on. So in principle, this is this is a, a demonstration uh, of uh, of uh, simplified analysis in the trigger. Something like this has been has been done on a daily basis in CMS when we are opening and scrutinizing the data. Uh, what uh, is uh, uh, characteristic for high energy physics and CMS in general is the usage of. Uh, multivariate analysis and what is uh, in recent uh, years uh, how it is referred to as machine learning. Since I joined CMS in 2006-2007, I was already uh, a witness and a user of uh, various uh, multivariate tools, uh, starting from the neural networks or the boosted decision trees or other, uh, other uh, let's say, tools such as deep learning now is becoming also very, very popular, very important in, select in selecting many of the, uh, uh, let's say, objects and, uh, and the events in the physics in general. So what, uh, what uh, you can find among the open data is uh, this, uh, this uh, usage of machine learning uh, uh, through the uh, reconstructed data of, and simulations from the one of the parts of the polarimeter in the very forward region. So you can take also this data and try to play with, uh, with uh, uh, objects such as trucks, such as hits, uh, such as other uh, uh, particular objects uh, to put them into multivariate or machine learning algorithm and see what uh, you could get. Now uh, we move to the final part of the, of the talk. Uh, this is an, uh, now the feedback from the users. Uh, these are the users from, the, from within our community, the community of high energy physics. Uh, these are theorists from the MIT uh, using uh, this is a group of, uh, of uh, Professor Jess Thaler, who is uh, uh, an expert in quantum thermodynamics. Uh, so he was using uh, the CMS open data, the data that I just uh, showed, and he published two papers. You see these are uh, uh, High impact journals. This is one of the leading journals in, in, in physics in general, physics uh, review letters. So he published um, a work on QCD splitting functions uh, uh, using the open data. Uh, 
here is the, the, the image from his second paper on the substructure of jets uh, that are, in, that are uh, reconstructed in CMS. And this is a typical uh, plot that we also produce in CMS uh, uh, there. Uh, so it is a fully, uh, fully let's say, contained uh, paper uh, providing uh, some uh, further insights from theorists but using the original experimental data. What is interesting and what I wanted to show you uh, is the feedback that we got uh, from them. So, for example, they used uh, their own uh, uh, conversion tool to convert the data format of the AOD into a text-based uh, MIT open data format that they use internally so that they can facilitate the usage of their own uh, external, uh, external to us, but of course their own uh, analysis tools. And they say that uh, from this perspective, the experience with CMS open data from their side was fantastic. From a technical perspective, uh, of, uh, though they, they have encountered, uh, encountered a number of challenges. Number of challenges. Uh, here there is an opinion from Nature Physics, uh, published uh, uh, in 2019, about the open data. Uh, in general, it's very positive. I could extract a few uh, sentences and few quotes there uh, that I found uh, interesting. Uh, one is, uh, let's say, uh, stating fair way that only those that spend years building the experiment have earned quick access. This is also related to the fact that this uh, analysis in CMS uh, or Atlas or some experiments of this kind, they last a long time. They like last, for example, three or four years sometimes. Uh, it's an opportunity also for other scientists to analyze the data while LHC is still running, testing some unconventional strategies, and also that uh, uh, the fact stands that the public data can complement the overall research effort. Uh, this is to summarize, so the CMS uh, experiment is making a very strong open data effort within the LHC. Uh, we are trying to facilitate uh, the usage of this open data uh, as much as uh, possible. We are improving, improving the documentation, adding uh, new software tools, other containers in the picture as well, and working toward the simplification and easy to use uh, uh, the, data, the data formats. The, the new data will be out very soon, and please let us know if you have any feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Georgievich, for presenting us how CERN is open and uh, what can we use uh, um, with CERN's results. We, we are running a little bit late, but we have time for one short question. Um, yeah. um, maybe we should give you a microphone. Yeah. This comprehensive presentation really facilitated our delving into Centre Européen pour Recherche Nucléaire, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, since, uh, and of course, the technical uh, part of the presentation is uh, something which is impeccable, and I leave it to the engineers to evaluate and assess. However, since I'm um, uh, pragmatically and practically uh, oriented, as it were, <coughs> Uh, and particularly striking was your mentioning of increasing the students' awareness of the importance of particle physics. So, my question would be, have you got uh, so far any concrete project in which either students or researchers contributed to increasing this awareness? Thank you for the comments and the, the questions. Uh, uh, in principle, what uh, we uh, have conducted uh, since many years is a CERN Masterclass. CERN Masterclass event is an event that is uh, organi being organized annually at the Faculty of Physics. Uh, uh, this is, uh, 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 in, the, in, the, in the, let's say, more recent years, uh, facilitating the usage of the open data that is, uh, that is available. So uh, what uh, we have, uh, what uh, it is being created centrally for the purpose of masterclass because this is a uh, worldwide event. Uh, are the real data, are the real data set packed in a way uh, and the, uh, the, the environment is set so that the students can, can access uh, uh, this? And uh, 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 on top of giving lectures in the first part of these master classes, we used to uh, also uh, uh, perform uh, hands-on exercises uh, uh, with, this, uh, uh, with this open data. This is one way of how the, uh, they could get involved uh, quickly. 
Uh, other ways are uh, 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 organizing visits uh, to CERN. Uh, I participated in uh, several of these. Uh, these are different kind of uh, visits of, of different level of education uh, from uh, high school students to university student. I was, I think, one of the first uh, uh, in the one of the first groups of university students visiting CERN in 2004. Uh, where we get to see also the experiments in the built-up phase. But now, uh, uh, aside of these opportunities to, to do this, uh, of course, um, like hands-on, uh, now there are also possibilities for, the, for not only the, st the students, but also high school teachers to visit CERN and to come uh, there for uh, one or two weeks and to also do uh, hands-on exercises on real, uh, real data. Thank you, Dr. Georgievich, again for coming and presenting this interesting overview of CERN's status and plans.